matter if they're in the office or if they're on an airplane or if they're in another country, they have those same experiences They're using something like an intranet or a collaboration platform to really bring it together so they can feel like they can have all those same experiences no matter where they are. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. I'm your host. It's wonderful to have you here. If this is your first time joining us on the show today, you are in for a treat. Like any other show, you're in for a treat. But this one, I think it's going to be particularly special because I'm online with the wonderful Anthony McGuinness. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Hey. Thanks. Glad to be here. So excited. Yes, absolutely. You, you and I were just talking a little earlier about uh, wine regions and all those sorts of things. But our focus today is actually going to be a quantum shift. It's going to be about uh, your involvement with Power Software. In actual fact, you're the senior solutions engineer at Power Software. And we're going to be talking about how to connect employees in a hybrid workplace. We're going to understand what that means and how to start or upgrade your intranet. Now, before we do that, um, Anthony, I love to spend a few moments with you talking a little bit about I guess uh, the journey towards getting to where you are but um, where are you located in the world? Yeah absolutely um, so I'm currently located in Seattle Washington so right in the upper corner of America is right that, by uh, <laughs> <laughs> Has that been uh, your home location is that where you operate from or? Yeah that's where I operate from um, I was born and raised in Michigan which is a little bit of ways, but um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a West Coaster, Pacific Northwest to be specific. To, to, to be specific. <laughs> so what drew you to the place? Um, to Washington? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> initially it was family, but really after that, I just fell in love with the region. Um, yeah, we were talking about wine. So, so wine's very popular here as well as um, beer and then what's great is you can hike in the summer and Very nice. snowboard in the winter so i mean pretty much everything you need and it's it's beautiful you just have to deal with a lot of rain in the winter so you have to be willing to, to be willing to, to say goodbye to the sun yeah yes. you gotta say goodbye to the sun for about six months or so so in that in that time i i guess uh, uh with your role you're very busy do you do you have much time to get away to do you know more recreational type things yeah, I try to carve out as much time as possible. You know, like you said, you have to get a lot of work in, but you know, you got to get that good life work balance. And I feel like I found that great sort of middle space where I can I can do the work. But then luckily, I have so many things in my backyard and just right around my area of Seattle, that I can find my way out and find some really beautiful, great places to be. Now, I like to um, find out a little bit more and dig a little bit deeper into your private life. <laughs> and sure, So yeah. I wonder um, what type of music you enjoy. Do you have a particular liking? Oh, I like so much type of music. Um, you know, I... I... <laughs> I tend to gra I, I tend to gravitate to more, um, you know, things like, uh, you know, uh, ooh, like, you know, very vibrant music. Usually, mm -hmm. I would say hip hop, um, a lot of rock, yeah, um, alternative good. rock. Yep. Um, things that sort of get you up and moving. But then also, when you want to have a chill day and you're sort of driving and you don't want to just have that bass pounding in the yes, background, yes. I like to sort of chill it down and have more of a um, a musical feel with with actual instruments and not yeah, just very good. 808. Yeah, very good. Yeah, instead of just all electronic music, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Now, what about your food? Yeah. What do you like to eat? What's your thing? Um, love Italian. Mm -hmm. I if we're talking about just cuisines and stuff. I love Italian. I love French. Um, if I'm going to be sitting at home and, and ordering something, it's probably going to be a pizza. Oh. Um, <laughs> otherwise. <Me too. laughs> I, I think if, if if I could, I always say this, if I could, I would hire a chef to make me sushi every day, all day. I think that's my favorite <laughs> thing out there. So, just some good nigiri, some good sashimi, and, and I would be a happy camper. You'd be a happy camper. Now, a pet. So you're a pet lover. You ever had pets? I, I have a dog. I've had many dogs in my life. Yes. I currently have a... Um, a four-year-old boxer. 
Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. Goes I just, by the name yeah. of Zeus. Zeus, and you just want to smush their face, don't you? Grab them by their jowls and just shake them around a little bit. <laughs> I love oh, it. absolutely, absolutely. He has yeah. a good smushable face yeah. too. I bet he does. You know, and I think um, in all of this, I find that dogs are very calming. Anthony, do you find that uh, you need uh, like some quiet time to calm down occasionally? Well, I think that's why I have a dog and not a cat. I think dogs really are attentive and they're more interested in actually being in a room with you. I found cats sort of like to do their own thing, but a dog to your point wants to sort of come and say hi and, and lay by you and you can go on walks together. So yeah, I, I, I love, I think I will always have a pet, a dog for, for the rest of my life, but um, I completely agree. Now, you have a very interesting background as an engineer, a solutions engineer. I'd love to, I guess for context, if we could share your, your qualifications with the audience, because I'm very sure that they're interested in finding out more about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I have just about 12 years of experience and I would call collaboration and um, UX within, you know, many different spaces, but mainly Microsoft and the, the 365 stack. Um, I started my career as a, um, you know, your typical IT person. So in the help desk space and sort of moved my way through and I've done, um, <clears throat> and I've moved from there into some um, identity management. I had a lot of experience working with Azure. Um, I actually owned in my, in my previous life prior to Powell, I owned my, uh, the full device strategy and um, collaboration space for a consulting firm. So had a lot of um, experience there and working with the, um, people like schools, um, consulting and helping there, as well as working with biotechs in San Francisco, where I spent some of my time and, and really had my growth happen at. But um, yeah, anything, I, you know, as a solutions engineer, I think it's been great because I found that I like challenges, especially with a um, technical um, feel and look to them, but really just trying to take this this huge amount of data and information and and technology that's at everybody's fingertips and figure out how to simplify it and bring it home where it's seamless and you don't have to have a you don't have to have a certification to be able to just turn your computer on and and launch an application and use it yeah that's the way to go isn't it i i wonder uh, i know that somebody in your field would deal a lot with problems and you know management mm -hmm. of risk tell us a little bit about that side and why you enjoy that sort of a challenge yeah, I think as I was coming up, I had a lot of experience, you know, wearing multiple hats and doing a lot of project management as well as, um, you know, really working as a business analyst. So it's really good to know where, you know, to see a problem, but a lot of times you have to take a step back and holistically see what other things are driving. And I call them threads. There's always more threads than are initially put forth. And you can really find a way to, to pull those and see how you can help people not just fix an issue, but transform the way they work. And I think if you come with that mentality and um, we like to call it the beginner's mindset, you can really come and understand what people are trying to get to and not just look at, you know, how can I fix this one thing, but how can we really help you in your next one, three, five years transform and create scalable solutions that will help you in not just addressing, you know, your, your immediate need, but any things that may come up even afterwards. There's a lot of times where we can't necessarily fix a problem on our own and you mm -hmm. do a lot of work with, with teams. Tell us a little bit about the dynamics of teams in, in your type of role. Yeah, absolutely. So I work with Microsoft Teams um, and so with Microsoft Teams, what you're going to really see is that, you know, even pre-pandemic, and of course we're going to get into that, but um, there was really this need to connect people wherever they are. So you, whether you're a global company, a smaller, um, a, a smaller, you know, shop, a startup, you really want people to feel like no matter where they are, they can get their work done. You want them to be as impactful as possible without creating roadblocks or any situations that's going to inhibit their ability to get things done. And this is really what the, um, the whole culture of change has done for us. Now we know that there's other things out there and we're in this and we're talking about it in a microcosm of work, but you can also take it a step back and see it even with just using your phone, having, an, you know, when you jump on your computer and you're looking for things online, it's simplicity and bring it all together with teams. I think they really hit the mark and, um, and Microsoft had a great 
idea that I think it started simple as, you know, a unified communication platform with a couple of, you know, bells and whistles, but they continue to build on it and see how they can pull everything together. And they get to cheat a little more than something like a Slack or a Zoom like we're on now, <laughs> yep. because um, they have all these other really great tools that they can go, oh, you want to use that? Let's pull it in. Pull it Let's in. bring it here. So, yeah, so you get this, you, you have teams, which of course you're making your calls with and, and your and your um chat, but you also have this space that becomes an aggregator for all the other work you do. Yep. So when you're looking and, and I think that in itself shows the power and the value of the of of what Microsoft Teams is and where it can go in the future. Is that um where we start to talk about the idea of cross functional teams? How are they different than the normal team? So I mean when you think of a cross-functional team, you uh, when you think a, a typical team will start there. A typical team is going to be a bit more siloed. It's just going to be one thing for one function, one space of work, and that's more of the the legacy way of what you would think a team would be. I'm here. I'm focused to do this one thing. With yep. cross-functional, you can really have a team, but have it call out so many other spaces. You can, if you have a, a piece of work over here that you're maybe doing with. Um, you know, I, I don't want to call too many other play, no, no. Um, companies, but Salesforce or Service yeah, yeah. Star, so you can bring that work in. If you have a team that you, and you need to be able to bring somebody in for a short period of time and, you know, have external um, guests as well as just bring in another group of people, you can do that, have them work in the way they need to, and then be able to pull that away as needed. So you can just say, okay, hey, we need you here for two months and then they can be pulled away. That's great for both sides because you know, your people who are owning that team or owning that project or space, they don't have to burden everybody with too much noise, too much work. Um, but at the same time, you're always flexible enough where you can make the moves you need to, to make sure the right people are in the team, are in the space and able to work quickly and, and address whatever issues come up can really come about. Thank you very much for sharing. I, I know that you work with, you know, top of the tree. You're a senior, uh, you know, uh, expert in your field. Now, I always wonder about um, whether or not your role's purely strategic or is it operational? Is it hands-on? What type of involvement do you actually have? Well, oh, absolutely. I mean, I really handle a lot of what we do in North America here. So we are a global company, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I, I, I wear a lot of hats purely because I love to and I have the experience to be able to really step in. I can, you know, when you, when you talk about strategic, absolutely. What's the framework of how, you know, you address issues? You know, how are we properly identifying and making sure that even if we don't help one, um, one customer or opportunity out, that we're able to address that in the future? What's our roadmap look like? Are we properly getting that to our dev team, to our um, product owners and letting them know what we're hearing in the field? A lot of times you have breaks in these processes that people aren't getting the right information so they can make the, the most impactful decisions. And then on the operational side, really getting your hands dirty to understand what's, what the need is and staying a couple of, of, of steps ahead of what the other roadmaps are. A great example here is um, my company does work very closely with Microsoft. So we need to understand what Microsoft's roadmap is so that we can address it, so we can understand where we are um, in their roadmap and we're not doing anything that's too similar or we're, we're taking advantage of any new features or, um, or at additions of value that we see coming out. So it's very important to be able to do that. And on my side, I like to be able to, to, to really get in, get into the, um, the nitty gritty, if you will, or the yeah, yeah. I always call it <laughs> the weeds. and, um, the weeds. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> all of it. I like to get in there and really understand because that's where you're going to be able to draw a lot of those insights from. If you stay too strategic and you're too high level, yep. you can yep. miss a lot of the, of the things that stop that start from the, um, the bottom, you know, you, that's where the information's coming from. That's your user base. That's specific needs. And then you can scale them and create solutions that can address maybe that, but even more moving forward. So tell me, um, what was your journey um, towards Power Software? How did you actually get involved with this organization? Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. So I've been with Power Software um, for about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. And so I was working as a, I was on a, um, an endpoint engineering team, as I had mentioned before, really looking at device strategy, yep. um, looking how we integrations and how, you know, we had about um, 8,000 employees across about 40 markets globally. And it was really, how do we make sure and address what's happening in the field and what do people need? What, what do they want? What I, what I found was that 
collaboration and the ability to connect is becoming more and more important and prominent in yeah. everything we do. And of course, right when you know I was starting to have these feelings, and even before the pandemic, um, I, I was already sort of getting my mind around this concept. And I saw even then before Teams was already, you know, sort of taking off. And it's then as soon as the pandemic did happen, right around, I would say, um, February or so, I just really saw this need out there. And I said, wow, people need to connect in a, in a better way that really values their culture and connectivity, the connective tissue, if you will, of a company. And how do you extend that out from the office? We all can go into an office and you know, I would love to be sitting right next to you right now, Rick, and like yeah, you said, having a having glass a of wine or yep. go grab a coffee. But that's not going to be the world we live in moving forward. No. So because of that, and I got a great opportunity here at Powell, I was able to sort of make that transition and really focus on what I think is going to be leading the um, the market for many years moving forward. Technology is, of course, growing in different sectors, but it's all about bringing people's work to them, the digital workplace, if you will. And then there's also this concept of um, digital diversity. It, we're starting to get to a point where now it's almost too much. Yep. You have too many things. It used to too be, well, options. I don't have enough. <laughs> right. Now it's, well, I don't understand where I need to go to get this done. I, I go to this app here. I have seven browsers, 10 browsers open a day. <laughs> I don't understand you know, what's happening. So how do we bring that in and use things like Teams, like an intranet to really tie everything together, to still give everybody the tools they need to succeed? but not ask them to, to read a whole booklet <laughs> on how to get every, you know, to actually work within each field. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic feedback. Thank you very much. I think that really outlines the core of the power organization. Now, if you don't mind, I always love to talk about, um, I guess, the, the leaders inside the business. Tell us about the leadership team at, at Power Software. Yeah, absolutely. So we are a global company. We're based in France. So mm -hmm. We, um, our leadership's really just focused on being, um, on really dialing in on what the needs of our customers are and any new opportunities. The marketplace is always growing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know how much Teams has exploded. But with that, we know that Microsoft, and, and to your earlier point, is really on a high level strategic look of viewpoint of what can we do to address very large scale issues. You know, we need more people on a call. How do we, how do we create a team that really builds, allows you to have, you know, more, um, more members in as well as better security. We're able to really hyper-focus on what the needs of your specific organization are. You know, you have these concepts like governance, um, you have, you know, ease of use, you know, we have these different pillars. And then of course, like digital workplace. So how do we keep people love teams? They love to work within it. Mm -hmm. How do we keep mm -hmm. them there and bring their work to them within teams instead of asking them to have teams and then have another window open over here and another window another open over there thing. and start jumping back and forth. So our leadership here is really focused on that. We have a great um, sales practice as well as we have a new um, chief product officer who's really done a great job of bringing that all together. We have two great offerings that we're really focused on with Powell Internet and um, Powell Teams that just really ties in um, what people are looking for and, and yeah. what they are and what is going to be impactful and show value moving forward so that they can focus on things that are, are more, they can have the tools and the, and the different, you know, I would say knobs and levers to be able to pull when they need to make decisions or make, um, and, you know, send out a mass, uh, a mass message or put, have somewhere to put information at that they have the ability to do so. We've begun to lift the lid on, um, you know, what a post-COVID world will look like. We've talked about mm -hmm. the ability to work as teams both remotely. We've ha talked about, uh, I think we've just started talking about intranets. And I think um, I remember in my corporate um, past um, loving the intranet. I found that it was great for managing various systems from quality, environment, safety, everything and anything that would go in between. You'd have your HR components, you would have basically everything on this. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important for you to explain um, a couple of things. Um, the concept of a hybrid workplace as that applies to intranet. So do they work together or how does that come together? Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a step back and just think about the hybrid workplace because this yep. is a new buzzword. It's been around forever, but it, it, it's a new buzzword. It's news. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> so you, you really have this concept of what, what is the hybrid workplace. So 
you know, we obviously see people starting to go back to the office and we're going to see that continue the uptick yeah. to continue. But I don't think we'll ever get to a point where everybody's nine to five every day and work. And there's a couple are in the office and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I think from the organization side, they're starting to see how they can um, grow their talent pool when they don't require them to be in specific spaces and move to to different areas just to be able to, to take on their work for this job. Yeah. And then the second piece is there was this concern when everyone did go home, you know, that we were going to lose the amount of work that's being done and people would disengage. We haven't seen that. We actually, it's been the opposite. It's people been the opposite. Yeah, more, I've heard that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're more dialed in. They know what they need to get done. And they don't have people over their shoulder, you know, pulling them in different ways. I know for me, for instance, when I came home, you know, a typical day for me, would be I go and I have, you know, that list, we all have that list of yeah, five yeah. big things I need to get done. But what happens? You have somebody who walks up and says, hey, I need you for this. Hey, jump into my office. Let's grab a coffee. All these other things are happening mm-hmm. that takes away from your work. When you're at home, Doesn't not happen. so much. Exactly. And so you can really focus in. Now, the flip side of that is, unfortunately, we have seen a disconnection of the culture of, of organizations right. because you can't go grab that coffee we can't have that little conversation on the couch or or play a quick game of um ping pong and, and you know really discuss things and you also don't see that sort of you know you're walking by and you hear a couple of people having a conversation and you're like oh well i have something i could you know that dials in very uh, well to yeah. something i'm doing i have yeah. this project i'm doing that these really make sense and you start to have these really impactful um discussions yeah so when we talk, and that really goes into this concept of the hybrid workplace, how do you extend out what was happening in the office? You have somebody, no matter if they're in the office or if they're on an airplane or if they're in another country, they have those same experiences, maybe constructed in a different way, but they're using something like an internet or a collaboration platform to really bring it together so they can feel like they can have all those same experiences no matter where they are. Yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, again, I remember relying solidly on the internet. It was the go-to portal, if you like. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I I wonder if you could just explain to those, because we have small to medium-sized organizations, startups and the likes listening into the show, and I would suspect intently today because they want to learn more about this. Maybe they're ready to make the transition and want to know more. Could you just break down the fundamentals of an internet for us? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. So we all know what the internet is. So let's start there. The internet is an external place where you can go and basically find anything. Yeah. If you say, take that same con- um, concept and you bring it into the internet, it's a space. And just like you had mentioned, it's a space to host and have information that people can come to and find what they need to do. It used to be more of just a repository for, you know, just files. We all were at the old SharePoints when you would just go and look at a <laughs> huge document library and you'd click through yeah, to find it. Painful. But it's really, yeah, it's really modernized now. So yeah. what it has become is bringing all your apps and your different tools to you in a space where you can work with it without having to, as I mentioned, have 10, 15 tabs open or go over here to do this, go over there to do that. Have things like events, be able to go and know where you can find your HR information. Where's my employee handbook at? Hey, I want to know what my benefits package looks like. You want those all to be in one space instead of having to log in and go to everywhere. And then once you do that, extending it out. So if, you, if you're on your phone, you have the same ability to find that information that you would if you were on your computer. To be able to feel like you can go and have, you know, in our case, we like to open things up like little communities, have, you know, caught the ability to just have a a quick, you know, fireside or whatever you want to call it, coffee with someone um, digitally. So really opening up a lot of those those borders or those segmentation that we see right now, because right, we've seen this over formalization of work since people have gone home. So if I, Rick, if I had a question for you and we were working together, I would call you about that question, you would answer it, and then we would hang up. And we really want to break that down to have people be able to actually communicate and, and drive towards more, uh, more useful culture-based work that's able to really connect everybody together. And so when they do need to get something done or they're able to find it, they can use that intranet space. And a lot of people will say, well, you can just use Teams or, or, or Zoom or Slack for that. And while they are immensely powerful tools, they really don't take care of that gap that you see, which is I need to find something, I need to search a document. I have a, you know, we were a large, we're, uh, you know, even in small and medium companies, you'll mm-hmm. see, you know, you'll see 
500,000 documents that they've had <laughs> since the light. You know, how do I find that? It's, you're not going to do it in, you're not going to do it in just teams. I'm not going to go find that exact document I was looking for. Yeah. So make that simple. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is either the person gets frustrated and they don't, they just break away from what they were doing. Or you start to see people do something called shadow IT, where they find the best way they think to get that done. And it may not follow your, your, your organization's security practices or best use cases. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I think about projects and I think about all the possible applications from a practical perspective. Let's say we're a project management organization. Mm-hmm. We've come to you at uh, Power Software. We want this solution. Can it serve those who are managing projects? Does it have that sort of capability? Oh, absolutely. I think it's actually really well honed in for that type of use case. So if you think of someone who's like, let's say it's a consulting firm, very heavy on on project management, as you mentioned, you can do a couple of things. One, you're going to have a space on the internet to be able to find, you know, usually with projects, you have a a series of documents of templates that you use to to track things. Mm -hmm. You can Mm -hmm. spin up teams with Powell Teams to be able to actually um, have teams specific to what people are looking for. And so it's not, you know, the tip, Building a team while you can do it, it takes a while and you have to upload all the documents, you have to build the tabs. We can simplify all of that for you. I think overall, what's really nice is that you can st- you can start to apply tags and metadata. So you can track, you know, oh, if, yes. you're, if you're project-based and you're a part of 20 different projects in some way, you can start to track those, see what type of work you have, you know, apply different tags and categorizations so that not only your user base can see what they're working with and what's out there. But as an organization, you can start to track things that you normally couldn't. Instead of just seeing how many teams you have and how many um, users you have, you can see, oh, I have this amount of project teams. I have this amount that have been retired this year or archived, whatever you would want to call it. And I can see how many, you know, there's this amount of HR teams and you know what, this business practice is, is it seems to be doing better than this one. It's so true. let's, yeah, let's go talk to that one to see yep. what they're doing right. And then let's replicate that. And then you can use, uh, you know, a tool like ours and, and, and many different um, aspects. You can sort of pull that over and say, here, this is working over here. I'm going to extend that out so that you can use it. And, you know, simple things like adding a tab, making sure a dashboard is, is accessible at all times, um, back to the internet, making sure that when you click in, you're getting important information directly on a feed or, you know, modernize and, so it really pulls everything together, it's, and I think yeah. even in that use case, it's it, it's an, it's incredibly powerful. Thank you again for sharing. I'm loving this call. There are just so many different, uh, I guess, rabbit holes we could go down here. I, I think about. Um, internal customers that's obviously those who are working inside the business they're part Mm -hmm. of the internal team so they would be our internal customers but I also think about the interface between um, the internal customer and the external customer it does this sort of platform lend itself to giving access to our customers our external customers you you're gonna see that at so with the internet by design is typically going to be um, segmented to your internal Got and it. that use i will say microsoft used to dabble in the external with right. their SharePoint yeah, offering, yeah. but they fully removed that now Got it. um but what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to um align and tighten up your practices so as you are working with other people you have the tools you need to do so you know a lot of times especially with um startups and other companies as they continue to scale and get larger they they, be, they there's this concept of their communal knowledge or they just sort of this wild, wild west mentality where everybody's just doing their own thing Mm -hmm. and it can cause hardships moving forward. On the team side, absolutely you want to be able to bring in external guests, bring in participation from other places. I can tell you I have probably 50 teams I'm working in now and probably 30 of those have some type of external participation. So we can allow you to really mandate that security practice. And I think it's really important to be able to do so and to have that information, um, to have that and be able to track it and report on it so that you know people are only getting the access that's required mm-hmm. and or, or feasible to them and also being able to remove that if necessary because as much as um, extension is important and making sure you can work amongst others, there's also security. And if you if you go a little too far, I know that most places InfoSec team or oh, workers yeah overseeing it will we'll come knocking on the door and say no this isn't working or <laughs> especially if you're you know in, in like healthcare, care yep. yeah bank government whatever it may be you have to it's paramount to be able to not only have those um proper 
we call them guardrails in place, but to be able to report on them, audit them and make changes as needed. See, this is the reason that you need people like Power Software behind you if you're going to be using this sort of software. Now, another question, there are so many questions because this is this is my jam. I really enjoy this sort of stuff. Thank yeah, you. I'm enjoying myself. Thank yeah, you. it's great. Cool. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, we know that historically um, organizations, not all of them, but all the ones that I've seen, that they have a heavy reliance on um, email and ticket management. What's the sort of, uh, you've talked about a third party software earlier, and I know that it does those things. What's the, uh, I guess, the interconnect between email and um, how does it um, work with your solution? Yeah, we're, while I think, you know, many years from now, we will see a lesser reliance on email. Hmm. There's no doubt it's still very prominent in pretty much any company you go to. I mean, it, it, it's the um, it's the postal mail of, of the you know early 1900. This <laughs> yes. just a requirement. Yeah. Um, and because you still use it outside of work, you know, with your Gmail, Yahoo, whatever you're, you're leveraging, it's right there in people's mind and it makes them feel comfortable. Yeah. But we are starting to see this move this move to a more IM and um, more personal peer to peer connection. Yeah. So yes, I can send you an email. And hopefully I get a response to that, you know, depending on when you see that. But I can also send you a chat that's a little more direct. I can see when you've read it. Yep. If you ask me for follow up, I can do so. So instead of having a thread, which I'm sure we've all seen of, you know, 10, 15 different replies, especially oh, yeah. everybody in the world, <laughs> um, you can actually bring everything in. And, and the most important thing is it's now referenceable. So if you need to scroll back up and see something someone posted or, or remember what the conversation was around it, you can't. And because that's so powerful, I do think that we're going to start to see the movement to that being the standard more so than email. Yeah, yeah. Our tool just continues that trend and moves with it. We absolutely tie in email for the people who need them, mm -hmm. need it and want it. But we continue to, to, to tie it into different other forms such as Teams. Um, I mentioned our communities where you can have your email, but you also have a focus calendar and a forum for people to talk. Um, to be able to talk into yep. and, and really feel connected because if we only had email let's just take a, let's just pretend and <laughs> it was just i send an email and i get a response it it, it would be a, a you know a, i think a much more disconnecting experience for for working especially remotely and yep. the fact that we do have these tools like teams that allow us to, to have at our fingertip hey you know rick I'm, you know, we're chatting, this is confusing, let's just jump on a call. Yep. That's extremely powerful. Yep. And that's gonna continue to lead where our, our, our future technology advancements will be, will, um, will be focused on. I love and it. So yeah, email, I, I will be the first to say, I don't see it going away, I use it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I will tell you, right, anytime I can take something off of email and move it into something like a chat or any of call, I will do it immediately because that's more personal and that's the way that's going to get you all those different tools that you wouldn't be able to do just by sending, you know, a, an email and hoping to get an email response back later. This is wonderful feedback, you know, and it changes the culture too, because there was a culture once upon a time where you would send an email because you thought that everything needed to be recorded. There are going to be those um, quick fire Absolutely. conversations that you don't need to do all of those things. Now, I think we're getting to the a sharp point, uh, sharp pointy end of the call. And I'm wondering um, uh -oh. who who is best suited for power software as their solution? Who are you looking for? Oh, absolutely. We're really looking for all segments of the market. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, today we're really talking about startups, sort of the, these, these companies that are seeing hyper growth as well as your small to medium businesses. What's great is you have this need and you have this challenge and most companies, they can see it and, you know, it may not be on the top of their priorities list, but it's there. And it's this need for connection and space to be able to really get all that information, like you've mentioned out there. And you really have two options. One, you can build something on your own, bring in the resources. A lot of places don't have, you know, you're a SharePoint admin, for instance, or they don't have, um, they don't have a means to grab an architect or someone like that, or they don't want to do a very large scale, expensive engagement to get this. So what you can do is you can really get one a vendor like ourselves to come in, assess what your needs are, discover what we can help with, and and, and be able to get you up and running in a much quicker fashion than if you were to try to spin up a project and do it all on your own. 
Yep. And then once when that's finalized, there's also this concept of maintenance. And, and this is across the board with any SaaS solution, which is great. Which is of great. course, yep. Who is, owns this when I'm done? Is it me? Is it, you know, is it Microsoft? Who is the owner? So you have, you now have a, a you have a vendor, you have a third party who's just as engaged in you and making sure you have all the newest technology and features as they come out, as well as that your uptime and your your quality of service is at the best it possibly can be. Because when you you think we always say we love to configure things and make sure you can have all the options you need, but we don't we take care of the customizations because when you do a customization, when you do something on your own, you build code, yep. you're going to, you own that now. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times. Yeah, exactly. So if anything changes, if Microsoft says, oh, we're going to fix this little thing on the back end and it breaks everything, yep. you have the onus on that. So what's great with our tool is we are always on top of it. Yep. And we're able to really tie in and make sure you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to have a large scale team for those situations. And you have us to always have your back and ready to go for you. So I, we go all the way up to the enterprise. We have, you know, our large companies. We, we really love our, our sort of, you know, small, medi- medium places. We love to help them scale. Yeah. And we love to figure out their challenges as they grow because we can be there and we can give our expertise. We like, I always say, I, I like to be an advocate for all of my customers as well as a partner. So that's the focus and to make sure that we can continue to build on the value you get initially but continue to build value moving forward as more and more challenges arise through any company's growth. This is incredible. Um, you know, we are just lifting the lid on a very, very deep topic. I know this for sure and certain because I've been involved with this type of environment before. So uh, if you're looking or you're prepared or you're ready to jump into this space, certainly reach out to Power Software and Anthony and his wonderful team. They'll have a conversation with you, get the ball rolling. Now, importantly, Anthony, where are people going to find you and what's the next step for them? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you have a little bit of our information, but um, you can go to powsoftware.com to find any other information. I actually oversee all of North America, so feel free to, to ask for me directly, and I'd be love to have this conversation with anybody out there. Um, myself, I'm on LinkedIn, Anthony McGinnis. And otherwise, any other means, feel free to reach out. We're always here to help and to discuss any needs anybody may have. Um, and yeah, I think we can obviously find Powell software on LinkedIn as well, Instagram and Twitter. So mm-hmm. reach out any way you want, um, ask you want. for me, yep. yeah, ask, ask for me and, and I would love to, to connect. And even if it's, um, if it's just to get more information or to talk, uh, talk about the needs you have, we'd love to have those conversations. So, so to get the ball rolling, if you're on this call today and you're interested in what we've talked about, Anthony and myself and, and Power Software, certainly look around this post, no matter where you find it, you will find a link back to um, Power Software and the wonderful team over there at power-software.com. We'll be making sure that link's available to you. Uh, Anthony, you're a wonderful guest. Thank you very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business Show today. I really appreciate the time, Rick. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.